quick mic check on this. How's that? Is that too much gain? Too little? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Yeah, one. When you're doing that, that's coming through fairly consistently. Right, okay, but off, okay. off, off center is a wee bit more like that. And this is me on center, and this is me off center, and this is me on center, and this is me off. Okay, so, so I mean, still when off. off, yeah, that was quite extreme though. Okay. Um, but is it, is it actually affecting the compressor? Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. okay. We try, we try it in series just quickly. One, two, three, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. She could come. Right, okay. She could come up a little bit in this monitor as well, in her own monitor. She's quite quiet there. One, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's better. And is there, is the bass rolled off in that as well? One, two, three, four. That's cool, cool. Okay, thanks. So, where are we sitting now? Are we over here?
Good evening, St. Silas. Even the sound system is excited, it's Christmas. Uh, what a, just extend to you a warm welcome for our first carol concert here this December. I am Robbie. I'm Ali, and we are two of the ministry trainees here at St. Silas, and we're so glad that we can welcome you here tonight. We, I, I am so excited for tonight. Uh, the carol service is always one of my favorite events in the year. I've got my Christmas jumper on. I've even got my Christmas socks on, though you can't see it. Uh, I'm just so excited for us all to be able to sit down and listen to some great Christmassy music from our band today. Um, I didn't get the memo to wear a Christmas jumper, as you can see, but I am equally excited for tonight. Uh, we're going to be having an overview of the Christmas story, and we'll be experiencing it through songs, readings from the Bible, and um, readings from eyewitness accounts of Jesus' life. It's a great opportunity to sit back, relax, listen to some great music, and enjoy hearing the story of Christmas uh, told once more. It's a great chance for us all to reflect on the hope that we hear in the story of Jesus being born. We're starting tonight right at the beginning from the first book of the Bible, uh, that's the book of Genesis, and Jack is going to bring us that reading. First reading, please. The first reading is from Genesis chapter 3. Now the snake was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the snake, We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say, you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it, or you will die. You will not certainly die, the snake said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree from which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman you put, me, put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The snake deceived me and I ate. So the Lord God said to the snake, Because you have done this, Cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. To the woman he said, I will make your pains in childbearing very severe. With painful labor, you will give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. To Adam, he said, because you listened to your wife and ate fruit from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat from it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil, you will eat food from it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow you will eat your food until you return to the ground, 
since from it you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you will return. Why don't we stand and sing in our hearts? Once in royal David city stood a lowly cattle shed where a mother laid her baby in a manger for his bed. Mary was that mother mild, Jesus Christ her little child He came down to earth from heaven who is God and Lord of all and his shelter was a stable and his grave with the poor and mean and lowly lived on earth our Savior holy and through all his wondrous childhood he would honor and obey love and one who is obedient, even as Adam and Eve were disobedient to God, we sing this next song. Child of Bethlehem 
Thank you to the band. The next part of our story that we're going to hear tonight comes from two prophets, Micah and Isaiah. These are men who spoke five or six hundred years before Jesus was born. In these readings, we see that God promised way before Jesus was born that a rescuer was on his way. At the time, these prophecies were strange and nobody could figure out exactly what they might mean. But amazingly, we see both these prophets and many more in the Bible came perfectly fulfilled in Jesus and his birth. Simon and Naomi are going to come up and read these for us now. Our first reading is Micah chapter 5, verses 2 to 4. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come from me, one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old, from ancient times. Therefore Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor bears a son, and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. And he will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth. Our second reading is from Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 to 9. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of the knowledge and fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness he will judge the needy, with justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike down the earth with the rod of his mouth, with the breath of his lips, he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt, and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb, and the leopard will lie down with the goat. The calf and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den, and the young child will put its hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Let's start. God rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day to save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, oh tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy, oh, oh tidings of comfort and joy from God our heavenly Father a blessed angel came and unto certain shepherds brought tidings of the same how that in Bethlehem was born the Son Simeon, your aged arms now hold 
your people's consolation, which God's own spirit told, a light for revelation, all nations shall behold, oh, oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy, oh, oh, tidings of comfort and joy. This reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, verses 18 to 25. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law, and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. A virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son and he gave him the name Jesus. Let's stand again.
We pick up our story in the book of John, which was written by one of Jesus' closest followers. It combines the physical and spiritual realities of the birth of Jesus, and it tells of the baby who was born physically, who John knew, and why God came down to live among us. One of the great spiritual realities that John tells us of is that this baby that was born was God become man. And he did that so that we could have the spiritual reality of becoming children of God. And he's going to come and read from John chapter 1 for us now. John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world. And though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified concerning him. He cried out, saying, This is the one I spoke about when I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Out of his fullness we have all received grace in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only Son who is himself God and is in the closest rela relationship with the Father, has made him known. We'll stay seated for this one. Of the Father's love begotten, ere the worlds began to be, He is Alpha and Omega, He the source, the ending He. Of the things that are, that have been, and that future years shall see, Evermore and evermore, evermore and evermore. He is found in human fashion, death and sorrow here to know that the race of Adam's children, doomed by law, to endless woe may not henceforth die and perish in the dreadful gulf below evermore and evermore evermore and evermore oh that birth forever when the 
virgin full of grace by the holy ghost conceiving bore the savior of our race and the babe the world's redeemer first revealed his sacred face evermore and evermore evermore and evermore O ye heights of heaven adore him angel hosts his praises sing pars dominions bow before him and extol our god and king let no tongue on earth be silent every voice in concert sing Gospel, chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. Um, it was pointed out to me whilst we were singing God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen that the lyrics talk about um, singing and embracing one another. And it's quite ironic to be singing that tonight because we've not been able to do that for the last nine months, to sing or to embrace each other. Um, but we can still find joy in dark and difficult times such as these. Um, and we can pray to God our Father, bringing our joy and sorrow to him because he cares for us and he's big enough to deal with all our troubles. Uh, and I'm going to pray just now, uh, and I'm going to open our time of prayer with words from a poem in the Bible, from the book of Psalms, and um, the poem expresses our dependence on God in tough times. So let's pray together. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way, and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. Father, we come to you at the end of what has been an incredibly different and difficult year for all of us in many different ways. We have struggled with the unpredictability of the year, with cancelled plans, loss of jobs, and having restricted time with those we love. Father, although this has been a hard year, we thank you that you have not changed or been baffled by the changes of the year. You are still our refuge and strength when life is good and bad. 
Thank you for the good news we celebrate at Christmas, that your son, you sent your son into our world to experience all the hardships that, that we face. Thank you that in Christ we have a God who knows what it is to suffer, to experience loss, sickness, and disappointment. We praise you because through Jesus coming into the world, we can be reunited with you, and we are given true joy and hope that sustains us through the trials of this life. Thank you that one day we will know a life without suffering, where we live with you forever. Father, let this hope sustain us now and for the rest of our lives. We praise you for the easing of restrictions over the festive period. We thank you that most families will be able to join together to celebrate. But we pray for those who won't be able to see family, whether that's for health reasons or other reasons. We ask you to comfort those who will be alone over Christmas. We think of international students, the elderly or vulnerable, and others who are likely to be alone. Help them to find a bubble to be a part of, and we ask that they would experience your love as they share Christmas with people. Father, we pray for students, especially those in halls who have had such a strange introduction to university life. We pray for students at St. Silas doing exams at the moment. Help them to work hard, to have motivation to study, and to not be anxious, but to cast their burdens and anxieties on you because you care for them. Help them to glorify you in the work they do. Lord, we are grieved to hear of the deaths of students across the country this year, and we bring before you the family of Hunter Campbell, a student at Strathclyde who died this week. Comfort his family in their grief and provide support for those who are grieving his death at what should be a joyful time of year. Father, please bring help and hope to those struggling with poor mental health. Provide people with friends or professionals to talk to so that they can be well supported and move away from the darkness they experience. Father, we praise you for the answers to prayers for a COVID-19 vaccine. You have been so good to us in providing a vaccine that is currently being rolled out. Please bless the dis distribution of the vaccine. Help us be patient as we wait for it to get to the most vulnerable first and reduce any fears we might have of getting vaccinated. Would you allow the vaccine to be given to poorer countries as well as the wealthy ones? Please don't allow someone's financial status to be a barrier to them receiving protection from the virus. We ask that you heal people around the world who are suffering from COVID-19 and restore health to those who are experiencing the effects of long COVID and other COVID complications. Please be providing physically for those who have suffered financially because of the pandemic and restore people to their jobs and livelihoods around the world. Father, we ask that in 2021, we would start to see a return to, to life without distancing or isolating and that we'd learn from 2020 not to boast in the plans we make from our, for ourselves, but to submit ourselves to you and your ways. Father, help humanity, humanity to see their need for you and the futility of building a life apart from you. Help us at the close of this year to reflect on how you have been with us and help us to go into 2021 trusting you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Ali, for praying. Uh, as Ali said, it's uh, great that we are able to pray to God in these times. And especially, another thing we're really thankful for in the times when we can't sing all together is such extremely talented musicians. So I want to take a few seconds to introduce them all to you so we can say thank you. Uh, we've got Tom on piano, Greg and Sarah singing, and Ellen on violin. So we're incredibly thankful for them. Uh, and I'm really excited because next up we are singing Angels from the Realm of Glory, which is one of my favorite songs. But I'm going to stand over here so we can see Greg when I ask him the question. I was listening in rehearsal. And for the chorus, it wasn't exactly in English. Uh, so I just was wondering what's going on. It, are you singing, no, I think it's no, Latin? No, it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. exactly in English. So is that... It was exactly you, in Latin. Exactly yes. in Latin. Is that what the angels spoke? Is that, no, uh, that is... A, all the angels speak in Latin. Do you not know that? I thought you were a ministry trainee. No. Um, it was, Latin was just the universal kind of language that the, the church um, used um, in, in his, in, throughout history. And um, it's just a phrase that basically translates as glory to God in the highest. So the angels were just um, announcing this amazing thing so that uh, the human beings that were hearing this message 
would understand just how amazing it was because I think we have a tendency to um, yeah, underestimate just how wonderful God is. So that's a great phrase to, to sing as a chorus. Great. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing it. Over to you. Let's do it. Why don't we all stand? Angels from the realms of glory, wing your flights over all the earth. Ye who sang creation story, now proclaim Messiah's birth. chapter 9, verses 1 to 7. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, but in the future, he will honor Galilee, the nations, by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. 
Every warrior's bits used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the governments will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Great. Cheers, Lizzie. Thanks for reading there. Thanks, uh, Greg and the band there. We all right at the back there. Great. Uh, good evening. My name's uh, James. I'm on the staff team here at St. Silas. And uh, if you could keep that passage open, that would be a great uh, joy and encouragement uh, to me. Hopefully, uh, you were uh, encouraged as you read that passage. And uh, you might be able to tell by my accent that I didn't grow up in Scotland. And so, uh, carols by candlelight is always a bit of a novelty. I grew up on the beach in South Africa, and uh, at this time of year, uh, normally we'd uh, spend all day at the beach and then go for a barbecue. And uh, if you put a candle out at this time, it would be in broad daylight at this time in the evening. So uh, coming to Scotland in the gloom is a bit of a treat and a novelty which I'm enjoying. Let me pray as we begin. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. Father, we thank you that you have sent your son. We thank you that he is the light of the world we need. Please help us to gaze upon that light now. In Jesus' name, amen. And before we be begin, uh, can I just say that if you are here tonight for the very first time, and maybe you've wandered into church uh, not knowing what's going to happen, and you've heard that reading in Isaiah earlier, and you've thought, what on earth is he on about? You're in good company. You see, Isaiah is a prophet. He's the greatest of his generation of poets, uh, and he is, uh, he's seen his country conquered. He's seen his countrymen carried off. He's seen uh, kings come and go. He's witnessed all of this, and he is writing his masterpiece. Uh, he is the greatest prophet, uh, the greatest poet in a thousand years, and he's writing like a man possessed. Uh, one of our students uh, described coming to the Bible as a uh, spiritual crack, and uh, that's not a bad uh, explanation or understanding of what Isaiah is like. Uh, he's writing like a man possessed, and he's firing on all six cylinders, and he's playing a blinder in this book. And uh, uh, what he's saying to you, what, so what I'm trying to say to you is if you come here and you feel intimidated by that reading, don't be. You're in good company. That's okay. And he's got one point, and he's making it in three bits. You've blown it, but that's not the end of the story. God has sent his king. See, as I, he's writing to a people who have utterly rejected God. They want nothing to do with God. Uh, you might think that Britain's a post-Christian country today. Well, it's not a patch on what it was like in Israel in Isaiah's day. And Isaiah says to them, you've blown it. Just look down at verse 1 of our reading. Maybe it'll come up on the screen, hopefully. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. They're in gloom, and they are in distress. And uh, as Isaiah spoke to them then, it's as relevant as it is, as is to us tonight, as people who've turned away from God and said no to our Creator. We've blown it. Uh, we've said no to the God who created us, uh, from whom all the good things in life flow, from, who, from whom family, friendship, joy, love, kindness, mercy, peace flow. And we've chosen to go our own way 
and we're in gloom and distress. We're in deep darkness. And the Bible's word for this, for this uh, rejecting God and being in darkness and rejecting God's rule over us is sin. And we've all uh, done it. Uh, this was uh, thinking back when I was really young. Uh, it took me quite a while to learn how to speak. I only started speaking at about six or something. And, uh, but before that time, I remember as a four-year-old going to the shop with my mum. It's always a treat. And uh, I spotted something at the shop that I wanted. It was a kinder egg or something like that. And I made this great show of, uh, of when we got to the checkout of helping my mum do the checkout stuff. And what I did was I'd taken a kinder egg and I'd hid it under a bag of rice. And I made this great show of helping my mum carry this rice through. And what I'd really done was stolen this kinder egg. Before I could speak, I sinned. I'd stolen. Why did I do that? I don't know. But my guess is that I'm not the only one tonight. My guess is that lots of us will look back at things we've done and think, why did I do that? And the thing about darkness is that when we say darkness, uh, sometimes we simply think we mean dimness, uh, a turning down of the lights. It's a bit dim in here tonight. So we think that we're, we're generally nice people. We're not in darkness. We're uh, maybe a bit dim in some situations. But I wonder if you've ever been in deep darkness, so dark that you cannot see the hand in front of your face, groping about in darkness, and you are powerless to help yourself. And what Isaiah is saying to us tonight, and what he wants us to understand, is that we're not in dimness, but we are in darkness, and we are powerless to help ourselves. We've blown it. But that's not the end of the story. Well, a couple of years ago, I, I went back home for Christmas in South Africa, and the house was packed. And uh, South Africa, rightly or wrongly, has a reputation uh, for having crime. And uh, the response that most South Africans make to that is they put up walls and defenses. Uh, so our house back home, so it's a freestanding detached house. And on the outside perimeter, there's this massive bush. It's called an Amantungulu bush, and it's got these massive inch-long thorns, and it surrounds the whole house. And behind the bush is a palisade, iron palisade fence uh, with spikes on top. And on top of the, the fence is barbed wire. And on top of the barbed wire is electric wires. And that's simply to keep the monkeys out, never mention the criminals. And then inside of that fence, you've got this network of uh, lasers or light switches, uh, where if someone climbed over the fence, they tripped it, the alarm would go off. And then on the house itself, it's got burglar guards, uh, thick, uh, really thick burglar guards uh, screwed in. And uh, because the house was so full, I had to sleep downstairs on the ground floor in the house, in the lounge. And uh, because I was sleeping in an unusual spot, I felt quite anxious. And it took me a little while to get to sleep. And as I lay there in the darkness and in the gloom, I started to hear a scratching, uh, something at the window. And I was thinking, what could that be? What is that noise? And the noise continued. And it, it, it sounded as if someone was trying to unscrew a burglar guard. They're trying to get a, a screwdriver between the window and the burglar guard and pull it off. And I started thinking to myself, what should I do? It sounded as if there was a burglar. So I'll tell you what I did. I quietly crawled out of the bed up to where the light switch was in the lounge. And I hit the light switch. And I went, wah! And for a second, I could see uh, the silhouette of a man in the window trying to break in. And then a, a crash and a bang as he fell off and ran out, ran away. And the truth is, sometimes when you're in gloom, and distress and deep darkness, you need a little light. And Isaiah writes this, people, this prophecy to a people who have blown it and they are in deep darkness and life is going to get very hard for them. But he tells them that's not the end of the story. Just look down 
uh, if verse 2 and 3 in our reading, if you can, in the dimness there. Uh, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of dark, deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest. And you might be uh, looking at your life tonight and thinking, what harvest? Where, where, what is the harvest? Where is the harvest? What am I meant to be rejoicing in? All I see in my life is barrenness, emptiness, gloom, distress, deep darkness. But don't miss this. Don't miss uh, the whole point of what Isaiah is writing and trying to tell us. He writes to a people who have blown it, and he says, that's not the end of the story. In the northern uh, region of South Africa, there's a place called the Richtersfeld, and it's on the border of the Namib Desert, and the Namib Desert is the hottest desert in the world. It is red, it looks like Mars, and it's absolutely parched dry. And for years at a time, it is barren, completely barren, nothing grows there. But lo and behold, when the rain comes down, and the waters rise up. The desert springs to life, and these pans fill with water, a tasha pan, and animals come from all over, and the desert flourishes, flowers upon flowers, for miles and miles and miles, uh, daisies and beautiful lush flowers. And Isaiah says that God will enlarge the nation. He will cause their joy to increase as people rejoice at the time of the harvest. And Isaiah's point is, as much as you have blown it, God's grace and mercy and kindness is more than enough to cover that. You see, you can uh, lift a person out the gutter and you can give them a bath and change their clothes, and that's a relatively easy thing to do. But Isaiah says, God is not simply going to change your clothes He's going to do the hard thing. He's going to give you a new heart, a transformed mind, and a transformed life. God is going to do the impossible. That stuff that puts you in the gutter, in the gloom, in the distress, in the deep darkness, all that sin stuff, God is going to wash away forever. And you'll look back to where you were then, and you'll look to where you are now, and you'll ask yourself, how did that happen? How did God do this? You've blown it, but that's not the end of the story. God has sent his king. And how were these, how are these great promises going to go, uh, come about? I wonder if you might just look down uh, to verse 6 there. And they'll tell us that these promises will come about through the birth of a child. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given, a Christmas baby, a baby uh, who'll die but be raised to life and become a king, who will rule on a throne, great King David's throne. In verse 7, he will reign on David's throne. His kingdom will last forever and ever, from that time on and forever. Uh, his kingdom will be a kingdom of justice and righteousness, and he'll do this as, uh, as his father works through him, the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. God has sent a baby who will grow up to be a king. God has sent his king. But how is this king going to fix uh, the sin problem? How is God going to put right the things that we have blown in our lives, that we, when we have blown our lives so badly? Well, Later on in his prophecy, Isaiah tells us how this king uh, became a servant who will die for us to fix the sin problem in our hearts and for when we have rejected God. So a little later in Isaiah, Martin uh, preached on it this morning. We read in Isaiah 53, a few chapters later. But he, that's this king, he will be pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. And transgressions and iniquities, they are just a fancy word for sin. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds we have been healed. We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us 
has turned our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. You see, God has sent a king, a King Jesus, who takes sin so seriously for when we have blown it and rejected God, that he dies in our place for that rejection and takes the punishment that we deserve for rejecting God. But God has also sent a king, King Jesus, who loves us so much that he dies in our place for our rejection to God to redeem all the muck in our life and make us better than new, to make the barrenness bloom again and to bring us out of darkness and into the kingdom of glorious light. You've blown it, but that's not the end of the story. God has sent his king. And the message of Christmas is won't you follow this king? Won't you put your hands up and admit that you've blown it? Won't you see that it's not the end of the story? Won't you ask King Jesus to be your king who dies for your sin and brings light to your darkness? Let me pray. So, Father, we admit uh, that we have blown it, that we are in deep darkness. Father, we are so grateful that that's not the end of the story. Father, we thank you for sending your son, King Jesus. Please help us uh, to hear him. Please help us to listen to him. Please help us to turn to him. And maybe for the first time, and maybe uh, for the hundredth time tonight. Amen. It's great to get a chance to um, sing these songs. I know that you guys can't sing, but I'm, in, I'm really enjoying singing them. Um, and I hope, hope maybe that you can be in, enjoying that. And I hope um, the folks who are sitting at home um, are singing out as well. Um, these uh, great carols that we have been um, singing for, for years, but um, the truths in them never get old and they're um, still so exciting to sing. Um, even when... Uh, things get especially dark and especially uh, when they get dark so and we're going to finish off with this song as Hark the Herald Angels Sing let's stand
Let's take a seat. Uh, once again, thanks to the band, thanks to everyone who's involved, all the readers, and thanks to James as well for speaking to us. We are just drawing to the end of our service tonight. There's just a few things we'd like to let you know before we all go. Uh, if you've come along tonight and you've really been interested by what you've heard, maybe it's your first time at a church service, or maybe it's your 100th, but actually tonight's got you thinking, uh, we don't want that to end tonight, and that's for everyone involved. So what St. Silas is doing in January is we're running something called the Life Course. It's an opportunity, it'll be four Tuesday evenings on Zoom, for people to gather together and just talk through what, the, what, what you think about life, what, what, yeah, about <laughs> what you think about life, and also to hear about what the Christian message is, about what our life should be and could be. It's a really great opportunity, and um, Rob's running these, uh, we've just finished one a few weeks ago, and it went really well. So if this is something you're interested in, if you, if you want to hear more about the Christian message, uh, go on our website to sign up, stsilas.org.uk. If you want to hear more about what the life course is, grab me after the service if you're here in person. And if you're at home, email rob at stsilas.org.uk. Or yes, his email is also on the website. You can find all the information on there. It's a really great chance to come together and just talk these things through. Uh, they warrant more than just uh, an hour and a half of your time listening to a service. Great, thanks. Um, and we have a lot more services happening in the weeks and days running up to Christmas. Um, we have these flyers um, dotted around hopefully, but um, all the details are on our website as well. Um, but I'll just flag up to you that next week in the evening we have um, a carol service much like this. Uh, it'll be exactly the same format except we'll have uh, different songs and a different talk. Um, and that is at half five and then it's repeated at half seven. Um, so do sign up for that if you'd like to come. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for coming. Uh, it's been a really great night. We hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you for watching at home as well. Um, and we hope you have a great week. Yeah, I will just pray to close. Uh, so let's pray together. Father, thank you that you looked into our world and sent your son into the darkness. Thank you that he has brought light to all who believe in him. I pray that as we go out into this week and, and the next two weeks leading up to Christmas, that we won't forget the story of that first Christmas. We won't get bogged under by uh, the presents and the shopping and all the stress that might come. But Father, I ask as we remember the manger and the baby that was born, we wouldn't just think about that first stable, but rather when we think of Jesus, we will look forward to the death he died for us, that we might accept Jesus as king and let him lead our lives and willingly follow him. Be with us this week, Father, as we go out to our lives. Uh, give us the, the strength and wisdom to, to follow you where possible uh, and help us know more of you e each and every day. In your holy name, Father. Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming. Thank you.